Hello, this is Shakira. How you doing? All y'all that call me the hateful bigot or the hateful Christian. I am not hateful Christian. I am back. Hi. Uh, anyway, I'm here to give God a glory and honor to teach y'all about the difference between heaven and hell. I have been looking on YouTube for many months now about, uh, you know, seeing street preachers, which I really thank God for them, but there are some of them that are very harsh and that, that do talk nothing but hell, fire, brimstone, and I get frustrated about it because there is a place called heaven, and it needs to be preached more with the reality of hell. Jesus didn't just talk about hell, but also heaven as well. I don't know. We gotta get to it. So I hope you got your Bibles. I hope you do. And if you're not born again, you better listen. <gasps> In my father's house are many matches. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, they, there ye may be also. That's John 14, 2 and 3. Chapter 14 of John, verse 2 and 3. Another one, in Hebrews eleven sixteen. But now they desire a better country that is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he hath prepared for them a city. You know what the city is? It's the city of God. You know, a new Jerusalem, heaven. Okay? So I'll just give you scriptures about heaven. So keep in mind that there is a place called heaven besides hell. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doeth not yet appear what we shall be. For we know that we, he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's First John Chapter 3, verse 2. And then for us that are saved, born again Christians, you know, sooner or later all of this will disappear, be taken away. So here's a scripture I know some of y'all know. This one, some of y'all don't know, is 1 Corinthians 15, 52. It says, Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. Again, that's from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51 and 52. So there is a place called heaven. The question is, do you want to go to heaven? Do you want to go? Because God, that's why God says, Oh, we've got the Son Jesus, so that one day we'll all go to heaven. But if you do not want to go to heaven, there is a place called hell. That's why, that's why God sent His only Son, that we can reconcile with God, that we can have a relationship with God. Because in the Garden of Eden, or in the Garden of Eden, you know, God had created man, He created the heavens and the earth. He created the the trees, the fishes of the sea, the fowls of the air, which is the birds. He created everything. And he created man, which is Adam, and he created Eve out of Adam. Oh, uh, so in Genesis two seventeen he was telling you know, Jesus was sorry, God was telling Adam that you can eat every fruit there is or any tree except this one, which is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. It said, if you eat of it, the day you eat of it, ye shall surely die. That's in Genesis 2.17. Okay? But somehow, in Genesis 3.5, you know, the serpent, which is the subtle of there, had tricked the Eve because Adam wasn't there with her. And so, oh, ye shall not surely die. You know, the day you eat of it, you, your eyes be open, it should be God's you knowing both good and evil. But she got deceived and tricked. You understand? And both of them got kicked out of Adam, got, got kicked out of the Garden of Eden. 
Adam and Eve. Not just Adam, not just Eve, Adam and Eve. Okay? So ever since then, they disobeyed God, and now we have to wear clothes, we have to work, we have to go to school. You know, us women, we have to bear children in a horrible way. You know, labor pains, childbirth, you know, you die of it. And it's because of sin. Sin brings death. It says in Romans 6, 23, for wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So, you know, we deserve death. We, we sin against God. You know, I wasn't always saved. You know, I wasn't raised in a Christian home. I wasn't raised in the church. Okay? And I still got a long way to go. But hey, I'm, I'm proud to be saved. I'm proud to have Jesus in my life. And because of that, I can have a relationship with God the Father. So if anybody has a problem with that, I don't know what to tell you. So, there's more about heaven. And this is going to be the last one. And, it's, and they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God. And the song of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. And that's in Revelations 15, 3. So heaven is going to be a great place. You don't have to worry about uh, dying or anything like that. And that's why it's important that Christians like me that are telling you to come to Jesus because this, you, you're missing out on heaven. Heaven is a real place. It's paved with streets of gold. You're going to have tons of mansions. You'll be with the Father God and Jesus forever. There'll be love, compassion, and everything. Why you don't want that? I don't get it. So it says here, Revelation 21, 4, which is my favorite. It says, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. But, there is a place called hell. Sorry to tell you. <laughs> Ready to hear it? All y'all think that hell is just a big shindig party. You're lying to yourself. Let's get to it. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God. That's Psalms 9.17. The next one is from Proverbs 9.17. 17, 18. Stolen waters are sweet, and bread in and secret is pleasant. But he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guesses are in the depths of hell. So it's about an adulterous woman, or some false prophet saying, oh yes, yeah, really great. You know, there's a lot of secret things going on. But I realize the cause of it is death. And this is Jesus saying in Matthew seven thirteen, why you need to come to Jesus? Because this is why. Enter ye at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go thereat. What is he talking about? Hell. It's a broad place, while heaven is a straight, tiny, narrow, difficult path. You get that? You get what I'm saying? You know, it's not something to glorify. You know, going to heaven. I mean, going to heaven should be glorified, but going to hell is not really. No. Uh still not convinced. Still not convinced. But you know, a lot of people are going to say this was such thing as hell. Yes. Um, Luke sixteen twenty six says that besides all this. Between us and you, there's a great gulf fix. So that they which will pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that will come from thence. So there's a, a great gulf that God has set, you know, between heaven and hell. No way that's from heaven can go to hell, no way from hell can go to heaven. That means it, it, it is always, it's, it's, it's done. So it is what it is. And it is 
And this is why we need to fear God because if you're wicked, if you don't love Jesus, and you live in all types of bubble days in this world, um, there's a price to pay. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that killed the body and after that have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you who ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast to hell. Ye, I say to you, fear him. That's Luke 12, 4 and 5. Fear God today. Because he has that power. Respect him. Because hell is waiting for people that's like that. And it's not going to be a joke. You got a lot of blasphemers. You got a lot of scoffers and mockers and all types of people that want to congratulate sin as if it's a good thing and hell is a great thing. Hell is not a place that you should glorify. It's forever darkness. It's weeping and gnashing of teeth. There's worms that never die. And the fires never quench. There's no love down there. There's no, there's no hope. There's nothing. Just terror. And a lot of people on YouTube have showed it over and over again about what they have experienced. And hell is real. Can these people make it up? I don't know. But I believe in my spirit that most of them is accurate. There's cries and screamings. All sorts of things. And then in Revelation 20, 14-15 it says, A death of hell was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written, written and the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You think it's funny? Why would God put that in his word? Because Jesus said that over and over again. There's nothing funny about hell. Okay? Heaven is real, so is hell. Sorry. And anybody that is preaching about hell, congratulations. Because you're warning people. But us as Christians... We have to remember not just to preach about hell, but also heaven, because heaven exists as well. And if you're not born again, there is a such thing as heaven, but there's also such thing of hell. Hell is not something you want to get out of, and it's going to be judgment. And then if you're not found in the last book of life, like I said, you will be cast in the lake of fire. This should frighten you. Ugh. It's, it's really sad. And then it says in Mark 9, 44, it says, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. And Jesus said this over and over in verse 44 of Mark 9 and verse 46. Where their worm dieth not, the fire is not quenched. And then it says it again in verse 48. Where the worm dies not, and the fire is never, is not quenched. So, you may think this is a joke, but to Jesus, it's not a joke. Come to Jesus. Stop being a blasphemer, a mocker, a scoffer. I mean, I'm glad that my sister Lydia had made a video about Kanye West and his abominable Bible called the book of Jesus. That really pisses me off because after what God had done for you and for me, all you could do is blaspheme his name. Do you honestly think that God should send his son just to die? We don't deserve to go to heaven. Are you serious? God has been so loving and merciful and forgiving and waiting, long-suffering for this man Kanye to make a book and blaspheme God's word. It's, I mean, if you're a Christian, this doesn't get you upset. Something's wrong with you. For me, it's very upsetting. And blasphemers will go into hell. 
if they don't repent. If you're a scoffer and marker, you will go to hell if you don't repent and come to Jesus. Jesus loves you. He's being very merciful and you need to recognize that. There is such thing as heaven. There is such thing as hell. The question is, which one will you pick? Where will you spend eternity? I'm not doing this video for my health or because I'm bored. I'm doing this to warn you. And it's important to come to Jesus because he's the only one that can save you. And he has that power to kill you, which is your body, and to kill you, your soul. It is what it is, okay? So, you need to think about it tonight, tomorrow, whatever. I'm doing this because I love you and I care for you. Because the Lord saved me. I accepted Christ when I was 16. But I didn't realize how important it was until um, after 9-11, 2001. Uh, so I really started to get serious about the Lord. But there were a lot of things in my life. But, you know, like I said before to some people that you don't live holy overnight. It's going to take time, but you have to stay in the Word and to live by His Word. But, you know, I just never gave up on the Lord. He he brought me out a lot of things out of domestic violence, out of rape, out of uh, a lot of things, even homeless homelessness. Okay? So, that's why I do what I do because He did a lot for me. Jesus did a lot for me, so why can't I not do a lot for Him? But I just let you know the difference between heaven and hell. You know, if you keep living the life you're living, you know, if you're saved and born again, you got the Holy Spirit, you will go to heaven if you stay with Him. But if you don't and you forsake Jesus, you're on your way to hell. And hell is not a place to celebrate. I don't understand why the media and a lot of people just celebrate in hell as if it's a good thing. It's not a good thing. I mean, come on, for God's sake. I mean, it's, 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 and, and I, I saw a lot of videos on YouTube, you know, about people hear these weird sounds in the heavens. You know, about, uh, it's like a trumpet sound. And the boobs and all that. That's God's warning. <sighs> not something to celebrate. Repent. Don't you understand how serious this is? God can crush the world if he really wants to. And you're just making fun of me and making fun of all the Christians that try to warn you? And making fun of God and blaspheme his name? I will tell Kanye West and the others, stop blaspheming God. Or else he will crush you one day. And you're going to have to bow at his feet. And you have to confess his name. Every knee shall bow. Of things in heaven. Of things on earth. And underneath the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to the God the Father. That's in Philippians 2. 10 and 11. Respect Jesus. Honor him. Worship him. Praise his name. Because he's coming back. And he's not playing. But read from Joel 2 chapter 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth tremble. For the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh ahead. You think this is a joke? When, you, when people hear the sounds of the heavens and the earth, you think it's just all a joke? Stop thinking it's a joke. And for all you elderly people out there, stop thinking it's a joke. Okay? Repent. Or you will perish by Jesus. One day he's going to say, depart from me. Ye workers of iniquity. You think God's happy what's going on? Think he's happy with the blasphemers? Think he's happy with the homosexuals? Think he's happy with the atheists? Think he's happy with, with, with all the people that just make fun of him? You better repent. That's all I gotta say.
And I don't care if I'm not being loving or happy because God is more angry. He is a loving God, but he's also the God of wrath. You don't believe me? Go read from Romans 11.22. It says here, pay attention. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God, or them which fell, severity, but toward thee, goodness, if thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou shalt be cut off. Let me see if I can read this again. Because maybe some of y'all don't really get it. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God, of them which fell, severity, but toward the goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shalt be cut off. Do you want to be carved today? Life ain't promising. It ain't promised for you. It ain't promised for me. And any given day, anyone could die. Okay? It's important is 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 a point unto man wants to die. After this is judgment. That's Hebrews nine twenty seven. Read it. This is a warning. Take heed. All right. Because I'm also doing the same thing. So I love you guys. I don't care if you hate me, repent or perish. You can come to Jesus by confessing your sins. I mean, really confess your sins. Cry out to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me for my sins. I know I'm a sinner. I know I need you. Come into my life, Jesus. And make me whole. All it takes about a couple of seconds. He will save you just like that. And the angels of God in the heavens will will uh, put on a big party and be happy if there's only one sinner that repents. Remember that. Come to Jesus before time runs out. Good night.